You're watching CES Live, powered by Ustream.tv, the most powerful way to stream live video, and by NewTek, makers of the TriCaster family of broadcast and streaming systems. And now, CES Live. Hey folks, welcome back to our continuing coverage of CES 2014. I am John P. And I'm Daniel Rubino from Windows Phone Central. My first time hosting today. How about that? How did you get how did you get like to go do all kinds of other stuff and not do your time on the uh, desk here? I don't know if it's a luck or a curse, because no matter what you're doing at CES, it's work, it's busy, it's tiring, it's exhausting. That's right. But this is different, and I don't have to be out there. I can be here with these great guys, and I think this is going to be a lot of fun. That's right. We've actually got Ian and Adam from Sphero. Woo! GoSphero.com. That's yep. correct. <laughs> all right, some people are like, what the heck is a Sphero? And I just, I have to tell a little story here before we get going, sure. okay? So when I was first told about Sphero, it was described to me like this. It's like this little ball that you can remote control and drive around and stuff. And I was like, okay, what? Yeah. that sounds kind of cool. I mean, right. I like remote controlling things and a ball, how would that work, you know? Then you guys sent Callie and I each one of these. We unboxed it on our live show in the studio. And as soon as we unboxed, I was like, this is kind of awesome. Uh, and we plugged it in and started playing with it. And I swear to God, the entire staff was completely derailed for like two hours because they would not stop playing <laughs> with Sphero. It's definitely a unique thing. On its concept, it seems extremely simple. And yet, I don't know, it reminds me for like when I was a kid, building models and these kind of things. And I think that's sort of where this is going. It's not just a simple toy, but it allows programming and all sorts of access. And I think it's like the first example of robotics sort of yeah. just coming to the everyday person, you know? Right, that's so. actually one of our main goals for 2014 is, you know, you are what you played with. We right. became what we played with, and we hope that the world can actually have robots in the world that are for entertainment and in for fun, yeah. but also have a purpose and, you know, are very, very advanced. Well, before we get in, I, I see new stuff here that we had not seen before. But before we talk about those, let's let's talk about Sphero. It, sure. it is indeed. It is a little ball here. Let me get the uh, close-up cam. It is a little ball um, that is remote controllable, right? So. Yep. I'm gonna um, do a dance. <laughs> oh, nice. We'll keep it. And he will do a twerk at the end of this dance. <laughs> right, we can zoom in on that twerk because it. Oh, oh there we go. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. Nice. <laughs> and so that actually... Oh, that there we go. Sorry, the, the thing was blowing out the video there a little bit. Okay. Now we go. So that whole dance right there was actually made in Macrolab by some of the Sphero Rangers, which are just children who have learned how to program through Macrolab with Sphero. That's, that's what, amazing. And that's what's really neat about this. There's a whole community aspect of people modding and doing all sorts of unique things with it, right? So it's almost like... It's not something you just buy and use. It's a hobby. It's something you can expand and work with and do other stuff with. Yeah, I mean, we, we feel a little bit in the Lego category, kind of, right. where you get one thing, and sure, you play with it what it's intended to do. Everybody built the main model, but you tore it apart right. and built something else. Yep. And that's what we hope that people will do, is build something else, too. Well, okay. let's let's start with the basics for a minute, OK? So yeah. at its core, it's it's a little robotic ball that you can drive around like it was a remote control car, right? One thing that I noticed that was interesting was you have to kind of orient him first, right? Yep. You have to let it know where you where, yeah. where you are. So, so um, when you so how does this work? You connect to him with your app, right? Yeah. Right. And so, then so we have this app here. Uh, you put your finger on this button here, and when I put my finger on there and I go in a circle, you can see this little white or blue dot moves around. And what you do is you point that towards you, and you take your finger off, and now the ball knows where it is. So now when you push the joystick away from you, the ball moves in that direction. Mm -hmm. So unlike a car where there's a front and you turn right and left, mm -hmm. this is all relative to you. So if you want the ball to go right, you just put the, push the joystick to the right. If you want it to go left, you go left. So, Is that something that you guys had figured out you were going to need to do before you built the first one? Or was that one like one of those learning experiments like when you, when you built it and you're like, wait a minute, we have to tell it which way is the right way. All sorts of new problems. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Gosh. <laughs> there was, yeah. There was thousands of problems with this thing when that was definitely like, you know, how do, how do we, there's no forward on the ball, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. Especially this one. So this one's our special edition for, for Apple Store, um, an exclusive there. Um, but our normal one is solid white, and you can't see the inside. So okay, especially right. like you have no idea 
you know, there is no front. Yeah. Okay, so you got this ball, you figured out how to give him a front and back, and you can drive him around, but what you guys did was, you weren't satisfied with him just being a remote control ball. Right. You had to turn it into a friggin' video game. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's crazy yeah. because you, you, you've made it so that you play with the ball and you kind of advance through levels and you unlock like more speed, more things. Tell us about that. Sure, that was actually one of our big initiatives uh, right before the holiday season was let's drive engagement a little bit more. Let's make it more than just a ball in our main app. And by adding a level system where you start at zero and you're not as bright and you're not as fast, and you earn all of these things as you play with it, and there's missions, like don't hit the wall for this amount of time, mm -hmm. or you know, auto drive. And there's also a whole story behind it now. So <laughs> if you play it, we have Brent nice. Spiner in the background literally telling you that this robot came from space, and nice. it's very futuristic and fun. Have you played that yet? Have you seen No, I have not tried it. But I, I was I, like, that's data. <laughs> yeah, I was right, like, that right. is freaking data yeah, from right, Star, Star Trek. Trek. Yep. And no, it's a great tool because you're training people to use it, but in a fun way too, right? right. So it gets yeah, exactly. them to play with it and not just hit the wall and get frustrated. Yeah, so. and that dance move even, you have to earn that. So you yeah. didn't, I didn't just have that, I played enough to earn that. And then you can also go into free drive. So if you're not really in the mood to level up at the moment or deal right. with the missions, you just free drive, you have all the stuff you've earned, you can really show it off to your friends. On uh, Christmas Day, we had a bunch of people over to the house I was driving my Spiro around all friggin' day, trying to get to where I had the maximum speed unlocked. Yeah. Okay, I'm not kidding you. Like the family's over here, and I'm driving this thing all over the house. It was hilarious. And what is the top speed? Like it does go pretty quickly. Yeah. Mm. So so Spiro 2.0 goes about two, a little over two meters a second. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's pretty fast. We, we That's like 900 miles an hour, people. <laughs> yeah, right. 9,000, yeah. actually. Oh, no, 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 sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, we include a couple ramps in the packaging for free. Oh, so cool. out of the box, you have a couple ramps. You can clear about a, I don't know, foot and a half gap. Sure. Um, I've not been able to actually hit that. I get it going pretty fast, and I miss the ramp every time. I'm like, <laughs> uh, i got to get better at this. <laughs> Okay, so that's that's Sphero. Now you have Sphero, and then you have Sphero 2.0. Are you, is is the reg, the uh, uh, the first one being phased out because 2.0 is here, or are they going to be sold together? What's the? Um, yeah, we're phasing it out we're, right now. We're selling it a little bit lower cost. We're trying to use it for like a lot of education. Right. Yeah. Um, so we have a program called Sphero Rangers where we're going to schools and teaching um, kids basic programming and math concepts using Sphero. And it's just a really fun way and you know hands-on way to learn these different things, um, and so they, so they start out with a, we have like a visual app called Macro Lab where they can program different shapes and and uh, we're using the Sphere 1.0s for a lot of that stuff. Cool. But now you have something over there that looks like a little kind of like you took Sphero and just widened him or something. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So one of our things is we do a lot of play tests. That's what we get to do is play sure. with robots all day. And we bring a lot of kids in and a lot of adults and people who like to play. And one thing people really love wow. is driving, right? Yeah. They yeah. love speed. <laughs> they want to crash. Crashing is fun. And this thing. And this thing goes over twice as fast as a Sphero 2, like 14 miles an hour, literally. Wow. So that's like a six minute mile. <laughs> I mean, this thing's pretty quick. Well, what's the battery life? Because. I mean, that's kind of relevant, right? But like, I imagine you guys have it fully optimized. I, yeah. I've been yeah. getting over an hour here at the show, nice, just nice. demoing it at our booth. Like nonstop, driving yeah. for an hour. Right, right. right. and actually the, uh, another thing is we're able to make this a little bit more, you know, I guess a little cheaper because we took out induction charging. So the okay. Sphero is totally waterproof, sealed. You can actually hit it with a baseball bat and it doesn't destroy it. Yeah. I mean, it's a really super soft, I mean, I don't recommend people hitting yeah. it with a baseball yeah. bat, but it won't totally shatter into a million pieces. And so it's super duper durable and maybe even over engineered. And right. so when you take induction charging out and some of those other things, we're able to kind of get this down to a, a really. So you're you know, telling me this price. is less expensive than the other? Yes. Yeah, so I thought it was going to be more. And that's kind of the hopefully the surprise <laughs> of the season. Yeah, right? Right. Like, you're doing it wrong. You're supposed to up now. <laughs> yeah. And we'll, great. we'll make uh, accessories for this. You know, everybody wanted us to put a camera and all kinds of stuff sure. in Spiro. And yeah. We did that at our office, and it isn't the best thing. It's not what we really, that's not the user experience we were hoping for. Yeah. But in things like this, you can imagine cool backpacks or accessories 
one of the main accessories that we're going to put on this, or it could just be built in, we haven't really decided yet, is an infrared shooter and detector. Oh, nice. Oh, so, so you can have little battles with them or something? Correct. Yeah. And the fact that uh, the Sphero 2B is actually Bluetooth low energy now, Okay. Um, you're able to use a lot of interesting pods or just little Bluetooth low energy beacons that you can make for racetracks, right? Like, so if you put three out, you have to right. go around the track and... Yeah, the, hit, the, hit the checkpoints and the phones know where all the tubes are, and while you're racing, you can shoot the other guy with the R nice. shooter. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty much like Mario, Kart. Life yeah. Mario yeah. Kart. Yeah, and like if you miss one of the little Bluetooth beacons, could it like maybe dock you five point, you know, yeah. five seconds or something like that, or slow you down even, or something. Or, or yeah, or you got to go down. back. Like oh yeah, know, a lot of racing games on the computer, right? I mean, you got to turn around mm. if you missed it, you know. One of the other things that I really like that surprised me, uh, and I don't know if it's, w by the way, what's the name of the new version? Uh, it's called Sphero 2B. 2B, 2B okay. So, so like tube? But like two, oh, tube. tube. But it's the B. number two yeah. and B. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Tube, yep. awesome. Um, okay, one of the things I really thought was cool was when you're playing the Sphero video game, you're playing the game and driving them around, like if you run into a wall, he crashes and he lets you know. He's like, "Ow!" You know, it <laughs> comes out of the the tablet or the phone, like he's making noises at you. Yeah, right. Um, is this one going to do the same thing? Yeah, absolutely. So our whole control system and sensors and every pretty much everything that's in Sphero is also in this. Okay. Um, which means a lot of our apps. So probably about a third of our apps for Sphero are also going to now work for Sphero 2B as well. What were some advantages of going with this design? Obviously, you could have just done another ball and continued that, but you guys are expanding and doing this kind of design now. And obviously, it seems like you get more stability, faster speeds, and like you said, you can build it for even cheaper. Yeah, I mean, I would say for this, so, so like, you know, we have all these apps and stuff for Sphero, and they're all right. really fun. Um, like Adam said, you know, one of the main things people do is, is drive it. Right. They like to play with it and drive it, so we figured, Let's make the craziest driving experience we possibly can. Right. And like this thing, you know, if you have any footage from our booth or like if you're at CES and come by our booth um, here in South Hall, it's it's crazy. I mean, you hit a jump and this thing gets three feet in the air and it's tumbling <laughs> around and like because of our control system, as soon as it's done tumbling, like we've done slow motion videos of this yeah. thing in the air, you can see it stabilizing and wow, aiming itself in the air. Right. That's awesome. So as soon as it hits the ground, it just keeps going in the direction you controlled it. And it's a great design too, because I've seen other, they, they're actually making giant robots like this now that are autonomous, they're security robots. Yep. So that design is, I think, really unique. And I see you guys got like treads over here. So you, you're adding all sorts of yeah. cool options for this. Yeah, Art, it's yeah. going to be totally customizable. So these are the racing slick tires. So oh, okay. if you're on like a carpet, you can drift around the corners. Oh, and nice. and uh, this, these tires are a lot lighter, so it's sure. faster. Um, but like on, uh, we were on a surface earlier today where this, it's like driving on Too ice. Too much. Yeah, yeah. Put the rubber on there, you got yeah. the grip, you go yeah. at it. Yeah. So you'll be able to put your different colors, different style tires. It's going to be totally customizable. We Excellent. can talk about these all day, and I would love to play with them all day. You guys, thanks so much for coming to show off Sphero and Sphero 2B. Um, one of the uh, comments here that I thought summed it up nicely, Jeremy AU, kart racing is dead, long live Spiro racing. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, guys, thanks so much for joining us here for our continuing coverage at CES 2014. We'll be back with more. Stay tuned. Awesome. Sweet.